comic book movie fans have wanted the X-Men and their supporting characters to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe for some time. And rather excitingly, that's now legally possible given Disney's acquisition of Fox. However, after 11 years of MCU movies with no hint of mutant presence, it might be difficult to seamlessly integrate those characters into the franchise. However, we believe it's definitely still possible. Not least because the likes of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are already in the MCU. And to emphasize that further, we're going to run you through 25 hugely varied X-Men characters who could realistically be in the MCU already. You read these in your spare time? Let's get started. If mutants exist in the MCU, they have to have a history. And there must have been a first mutant. Therefore, Apocalypse, who is depicted as being the first mutant in most Marvel universes, must exist in the franchise. We've already seen him on film in 2016's X-Men Apocalypse, but Oscar Isaac's portrayal was somewhat disappointing. So it would be fantastic to see a better version in the MCU. He could easily have laid dormant for years as well, rendering his absence thus far easy to explain. Mr. Sinister isn't actually a mutant at all. He's a human mutate, meaning he has powers courtesy of genetic experimentation. But he's an X-Men villain, so he fits the bill here. As a non-mutant, there'd be no need to explain his existence in the MCU. He's responsible for waking Apocalypse up from his centuries-long slumber in several Marvel universes. So it would be very cool to see that happen in Marvel's flagship movie franchise. He was hinted at in X-Men Apocalypse's post credit scene, but the hint never came to fruition in the X-Men movie franchise. So it would be satisfying to finally see him in live action. Magneto simply must exist in the MCU already, assuming the franchise stays remotely faithful to Marvel's comics because his children have already appeared. The master of magnetism is the father of the Maximoff twins, Wanda and Pietro, who are otherwise known as Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Scarlet Witch remains a member of the Avengers, while Quicksilver was killed in 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron, but it would be cool for the former to meet her real father. Seeing what he could do with the likes of Captain America's shield, Stormbreaker, and the War Machine armor would be very interesting. In spite of his name, Alpha the Ultimate Mutant isn't actually a mutant at all. He's an artificially created being, and there's good reason for him existing in the MCU already. You see, he's a creation of Magneto's who sought to create a being powerful enough to help him defeat the Avengers. Standing an intimidating 10 feet tall and possessing an abnormally large cranium, Alpha boasts a hugely impressive power set, including force field direction, telepathy, telekinesis, transmutation, teleportation, flight, and the ability to reverse the aging process. The likes of the Hulk and Valkyrie have already run afoul of him in the comics, so it would be cool to see the likes of those characters go up against him in live action. Movie fans obviously need no introduction to Storm. She's been in the X-Men franchise since the very beginning, and there's a good reason to believe she might be in the MCU already. You see, in the comics, she's strongly associated with T'Challa, aka the Black Panther. In fact, she's actually been married to him, which made her Wakanda's queen consort. And she's been friendly with the king since he was just a young boy, so if she was introduced in the MCU, she could be introduced as someone who's known Chadwick Boseman's character for many years. It'd certainly be fun to see a female character with weather manipulation powers to rival Thor's in the franchise. And now we come to Deadpool. Not only does this guy not need an introduction, there doesn't even need to be an explanation regarding his sudden appearance in the MCU. He's just so bizarre that fans would accept him just being there. Heck, Ryan Reynolds' version of the character who originated in the X-Men movie universe could make the crossover because he's Deadpool and that would be fine. Well, that's just lazy writing. He can break the fourth wall without explanation, so why would a jump into the MCU require one? In fact, it's the crossover that would guarantee unprecedented box office numbers. Contrary to common belief, the Juggernaut isn't actually a mutant in the comics, so introducing him to the MCU should be very easy indeed. In fact, he could definitely be there already. He's Kane Marco, an ordinary human who gained his powers of superhuman strength and durability, unstoppable momentum, and a helmet that makes him immune to telepathy courtesy of the fact that he found the Crimson Gem of Satorak a powerful artifact belonging to the godlike mystical entity Satorak. In the MCU, Doctor Strange has already invoked Satorak during Avengers Infinity War when he cast the Crimson Bands on Titan in an attempt to restrain Thanos. Therefore, Satorak definitely exists in the franchise, so Kane Marco could definitely find his gem and become the Juggernaut. Bolivar Trask is a mere human and the CEO of Trask Industries, so there's really no reason he shouldn't already exist in the MCU. He's appeared in the X-Men movie franchise twice, 
played by both Bill Duke and Peter Dinklage. But there's no reason a third movie appearance in the MCU shouldn't happen too. Interestingly, Trask existing in the MCU could also mean other related characters of his creation are also in the franchise, such as Phantom X, Nimrod, and Omega Sentinel. He's one of a number of ready-made human villains that mutants could encounter should they appear in Marvel's flagship movie franchise. And his company could become a rival to the numerous existing tech companies in the franchise. Mystique is famously a character who can make herself look like any other person using her mutant power of shapeshifting. We've seen her in the X-Men movie franchise since its inception, but there's every chance she could have been in the MCU all along as well. You see, thanks to the very nature of her powers, she could be hiding in plain sight on MCU Earth, avoiding the hatred of humans by posing as one of them. In fact, she could have been posing as a character we already know. The Skrulls have already proven that shapeshifting powers can fool even the smartest MCU characters, so Mystique could very easily have been doing exactly the same thing for some time. Given that S.H.I.E.L.D. have long existed in the MCU, it's fair to assume that their space-based counterparts might exist as well. And if that's the case, the organization will need a leader. That's where Abigail Brand comes in. Brand is half mutant and half alien, and classically, she's the chief commanding officer of S.W.O.R.D. and a major ally of the X-Men. She could very easily be revealed to have been in the MCU for years, as her absence thus far could be explained by the fact that she's been off-world. The MCU is set for a more cosmic future in Phase 4, so the arrival of Abigail Brand and S.W.O.R.D. certainly makes a lot of sense going forward. Another character associated with S.W.O.R.D. who could already be in the MCU is Lockheed. Lockheed is a dragon-like alien who encountered the X-Men in the comics when they were in space, and he's become a longtime companion of Kitty Pryde's, and that's where he could have been up until now in the MCU. He's already set to appear in next year's New Mutants movie, assuming it actually gets released, as a companion to Ileana Rasputina, aka Magic, but that doesn't mean he can't also be introduced in the MCU. If the franchise wanted to go really niche, they could even have Lockheed as a part of a live-action Pet Avengers. How amazing would that be? Now, before we continue, we should specify that we know a version of Madame Hydra appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the framework reality, played by Mallory Jansen. But a more comic book faithful version in the movies would be cool. And given that Hydra obviously exists in the franchise, that's entirely plausible. You see, Madame Hydra is the name of several different characters who are top female operatives of Hydra. A better depiction of the Viper version, who also appeared in the Wolverine as part of the X-Men movie franchise, would be very cool. And given that she's classically a mere human with extraordinary fighting abilities and a peak physical condition, there'd be no need to give her a complicated mutant backstory. Now, Psylocke may be a mutant, and there may be no reason for her not to have made her appearance felt already if she exists in the MCU, but the fact is, there's evidence to suggest she does. You see, in Avengers Endgame, at that S.H.I.E.L.D. base in 1970, Peggy Carter was heard saying Braddock hasn't checked in, and it's believed that she was referring to the mystical hero Brian Braddock, who is otherwise known as Captain Britain. Well, guess what? Psylocke is his twin sister! Her real name is Betsy Braddock. So if Brian Braddock exists in the MCU, it makes sense that the rest of his family does too. Therefore, this powerful psionic mutant, who we've already seen in the X-Men movies, could appear imminently in the even more popular live-action franchise. But Captain Britain and Psylocke aren't the only Braddock siblings in the Marvel Universe. There's actually another older brother who goes by the name of Jamie. Jamie is a villain who possesses the mutant power to manipulate reality itself but he's also a schizophrenic who believes reality to be his own dream, which makes him less of a threat than he otherwise would be, but also very unpredictable. Now, he'd be a very interesting character to have in the MCU. If he's been incarcerated due to his mental instability, he'd be one mutant whose absence from the franchise thus far would be extremely easy to explain. William Stryker is another man you should be very familiar with from the X-Men movies, as he's appeared in several installments in the franchise, played by a variety of actors, namely Brian Cox, Danny Houston, and Josh Hellman. He's also another human character, so the lack of mutants to date in the MCU shouldn't remotely hinder his potential introduction to the franchise. He could be introduced as a military man who's already familiar with the likes of General Ross and James Rhodes. And he's a ready-made human villain for any mutants who might be introduced at the same time, given his infamous hatred of them. A world with mutants without Stryker constantly wanting to bring them down wouldn't actually feel right, so he'd actually be a pretty essential inclusion in the MCU if they were introduced. 
Another human character who could very easily already exist in the MCU is Donald Pierce. Pierce is a genocidal mutantator who underwent a process to give him high-tech cybernetic upgrades. As a result, he has superhuman physical attributes such as superhuman strength. He already appeared in the X-Men movie franchise played by Boyd Holbrook in 2017's brilliant Logan movie, in which he had a single cybernetic arm and was Transigen's chief of security, but an MCU version would surely be welcomed as well. You may not think of Namor as an X-Men character, but he's actually half Atlantean and half human mutant. Plus, he's been a member of the X-Men in the comics. It's no secret that he's been hinted at in the MCU on two occasions. First in Iron Man 2 when Atlantis was highlighted on a shield map, then in Avengers Endgame when Okoye mentions seismic activity in the Atlantic Ocean. Namor is one of Marvel's oldest characters, so it's only right that he appears in their flagship movie franchise. With his superhuman strength and durability, flight, control over sea life, and hydrokinesis, he'd be a great addition to the MCU roster. Moira McTaggart is another character who is human, so she could seamlessly be introduced into the MCU without the need for a complex backstory. You're probably familiar with her already from the X-Men movies as she's appeared a handful of times in them, most notably played by Rose Byrne. When Byrne played her, she was a CIA officer, but she's actually a geneticist and expert in mutant affairs in the comic books. Maybe if she appeared in the MCU, her depiction could be more faithful to the comics. And she could appear on the scene if mutants suddenly start emerging as someone who could explain everything about them to the characters who aren't already in the know, which may well be every non-mutant character in the franchise. If Moira McTaggart was to appear in the MCU, Proteus would soon follow, because he's actually her son in the comics. Kevin McTaggart is a powerful mutant whose reality warping powers are so vast that they burn his body out quickly, meaning he has to jump between bodies to survive. Which of course essentially makes him a murderous villain. But given his control over the very fabric of reality, his sudden appearance could easily be explained in a variety of ways. Maybe, for example, he jumps between realities regularly. Maybe he'd used his powers to hide himself. Maybe he's been incarcerated in an esoteric energy cell that keeps his power under control. There really are so many easy and seamless ways to bring this guy in. For this entry, it would be foolish to single out one character, so there's an entire land of X-Men supporting characters who could very easily be in the MCU already. The Savage Land is a hidden prehistoric land within Antarctica, which has a tropical climate courtesy of the fact that it's surrounded by active volcanoes and assisted by high-tech devices to help it maintain its warm temperatures. It first appeared in X-Men number 10 back in 1965, and the crazy array of characters, including the Tarzan-like Kazar, the saber-toothed tiger Zabu, the Ape Man and the Cat People have since appeared alongside the X-Men many times. Like Wakanda, it could easily have been hidden in the MCU up until now by the advanced aliens who created it. Like the Savage Landers, this entry requires grouping a large number of characters because it wouldn't make any sense to include one or two. The Shi'ar Empire is a vast collection of alien species, cultures, and worlds situated close to the Skrull and Kree empires. And we know both of those exist in the MCU already, so the Shi'ar could too. It first appeared in X-Men number 97 in 1976, and its characters have since appeared alongside the X-Men on countless occasions. They include the likes of Gladiator and Corvus, who has actually been an X-Men member of sorts in the past, while the X-Men Vulcan was conceived on the Shi'ar throne world before being sent to Earth as a baby. He would later become the Shi'ar Emperor. There are essentially lots of connections between the X-Men and the Shi'ar Empire. The Executioner is Carl Denti, a former FBI agent obsessed with stalking mutants who kill humans. He could, therefore, already be in the MCU as an FBI agent. He uses an array of both alien technology and earthly technology, such as Shi'ar Power Armor and Trask Industries technology, both of which could very easily be in the MCU already, as we've already discussed. He'd be a really cool character to have in the franchise, and seeing what kind of MCU tech and weaponry he could get his hands on in order to carry out his deadly mission could make for a really cool movie. Just imagine him killing mutants using an Iron Man armor and Wakandan Energy Blast gauntlets, for example. It would be awesome! The Phoenix Force is simply a cosmic entity that was born at the time of the Big Bang, so there's absolutely no reason it shouldn't exist in the MCU. It is the immortal and immutable manifestation of the universal force of life and passion. The depictions of it in the X-Men movies were extremely disappointing, so it would be awesome to get a worthy portrayal of the powerful entity in the MCU. Also, given that it was such an important factor in the epic Avengers vs. X-Men comic book arc, its arrival in the franchise could trigger a potential Avengers vs. X-Men movie. And how freaking cool would that be? 
What would an MCU with X-Men characters be like if Wolverine wasn't a part of it? Well, he absolutely could already be there. Wolverine's backstory is such that he could simply have forgotten who he is and been living the life of a hermit for the last decade or so. Having undergone the treatment that gave him his adamantium skeleton, we know from the X-Men movies that he lost his memory and, even when he regained it, attempted to live a normal life. That could very easily be the case, and he could go on to be revealed as someone who fought alongside the likes of Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury and Chris Evans' Steve Rogers in the army in past global conflicts. Now, the guy who could potentially knit all this together seamlessly is Professor X. Professor X is, of course, the powerful telepath who brought the X-Men together at his school for gifted youngsters, and his power could be key to introducing them in the MCU. Fans will wonder where mutants have been if they suddenly appear en masse in the franchise, but the story could be that when the world turned against mutants, Professor X wiped humanity's memories of them from everyone's minds using Cerebro, and they could re-emerge when a threat comes to light that requires their assistance. Maybe, for example, Apocalypse is resurrected in modern times, and requiring a telepath to defeat him, Professor X makes his presence felt and, in turn, brings mutants back to the forefront in the MCU. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. So you see, there really could be a whole world of X-Men and their supporting characters already living in the MCU. We just don't know it yet. Can you think of any others who could already be there? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Screen Rant for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.